Hello, Tom Lavecchia here with the latest edition of the New Theory Podcast. So for those who watch the show, we split the podcast up. Uh, we're going to keep New Theory here on this channel, as well as the NBA Button Man with John Panisi. So stay tuned for that. But today we have a very, very, very special band of guests, the K3 Sisters Band, a group of three Dallas-born sisters, Kaylin. Kelsey and Kristen, ages 16 through 20, they struck it big, a quarter billion views and 36 million likes on TikTok. Welcome to the New Theory Podcast, K3 Sisters. How are you guys doing today? Hey, it's good to be here. Thank you for having us. We're doing really well. Thank you. Okay, so you're going to laugh, but, and I'll, I'll, I'll share with you guys after. Uh, we started a TikTok for my seven month old. And she already has 90,000 followers, one of which got 8 million views. It's at Adeline. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so, so I am sold on TikTok as a platform. So first, let's get started on how you guys started and how did it, why did you guys choose TikTok as a platform of choice? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, being in a band is something that's crazy. You know, we've been doing this professionally now for the past 12 oh, years. Oh, wow. And, you know, there's some, there's different aspects of the music industry. There's the actual musicianship and then the social media and then the actual business part of it. Correct. And so, you know, when you're in a band, you have to learn all of these things and people don't really realize that. It's really interesting. So, yeah. In 2019, when but we 2019 is when we started our TikTok account. Okay. And it was because of me, you know, the crazy little one. Like, <laughs> you were doing it. Yes. Yeah, Love one it. of my acquaintances at the time was like, yo, have you heard of this new app? And I was like, wait, wasn't that musically where you do like yes. the lip syncing? And as a band who writes all original songs, we were like, what is this thing? Like <laughs> lip syncing covers? What the heck? And so, and then she's like, no, like it's changed. It's now called TikTok and it's a video sharing app. And I was like, oh, and so I sniffed it out. And I found that it really was this cool new thing. And that was even before it became mainstream. It was yes. still underground at the time. Yeah, we joined yes. the summer of 2019 and we were just posting sibling videos, just kind of showing a different side of, you know, us as sisters and band content. And then all of a sudden in the end of July, we posted for Harry Potter's birthday, a cover of us singing Double Trouble, which is oh, from wow. the third movie. And that instantly blew up like crazy the numbers were just flooding in like crazy and that's when we you know noticed that there was this hunger for harry potter related content on tiktok and so we started we got some robes and some harry potter wands and stuff and we started making harry potter content because we've always loved harry potter growing up you know watching the movies with the books and and going to universal and so we were doing harry potter content and then we posted the infamous Heather's ex Harry Potter TikTok of the Dang Dang Diddy. And that one, man, just blew up over 30 million views. And wow. <laughs> but yeah, we've really been able to use TikTok as an amazing tool to reach our international yes. audience and international fans. We've been able to reach uh, over 50 countries from wow. uh, TikTok and our live stream concerts that we do on YouTube. And wow. the Harry Potter aspect is like a bridge that we have with other fans that really connect with us, especially since I'm in Gryffindor, all the Gryffindors connect <laughs> with me. And so far as Kristen Slytherin and Kelsey as Hufflepuff. And our mom is a Ravenclaw. We have all four houses. Yes. Everyone can wow. Relate. And yeah. 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 But we use these different fandoms on TikTok to, as a bridge, which directs them like, oh, we both love this fandom, but then they realize, oh, you're a band too. <laughs> so that acts as a bridge in which it directs them to our music careers. It's like, hey, we're not just some chicks that, you know, showed up yesterday with just a one hit wonder. You know, no, we, we've gotten the opportunity to grow up in the music industry. You know, we've seen the ugly and the good, the good yeah. bad and the ugly, you know, and it comes at a price, you know, yes. being it's business. Yeah. And when you expose yourself to the limelight, you're exposing yourself to the good and the bad. Correct. And, you know, it, it's worth it. It's a sacrifice that I'm more than happy to take, you know, alongside my sisters yeah. as well, you know. And with, you know, success comes hate. And so 
you know, when we were first really booming onto the scene, you know, in 2014, we started getting our first influx of hate comments. And so it was like, oh man, but you know, so my sisters and I came together and said, let's create something that not only we can rely in and on, but also something that our fans who are so precious to us, you know, we can give them something that they can find refuge in that any person, race yeah. or religion could relate to. And That's so nice. we created the K3 motto, which is I will always believe in myself and celebrate my life and the lives of others. I oh, will wow. respect the music and customs of others as long as they are not harmful to anyone. I will stand against bullying of any kind and choose love over hate. Hashtag K3 motto. <laughs> no, you know what? Like, I, I have two daughters and, you know, you kind of see, you know, other women, young women, and you say to yourself, wow, I would love it if my daughter and your, your parents have done a great job and you guys done a great job um, are like how you are, you know? So number one, I feel the energy. I feel the vibe. I love it. And, and I want to unpack a little bit on prior to your TikTok boom, prior to 19, and I don't want to downplay or minimize, but we're not as well known, right? So you go on the TikTok platform, you kind of find your lane on Harry Potter as a bridge. I love that because that's called content marketing. You create content and then you say later on, hey, by the way, we're a band and then people stick. So what did you stay independent as artists and use TikTok as your platform and not need a big label? Or did you leverage your audience to get a label? I wanna know if you guys are going the traditional label route or not, and what role TikTok plays in that? All right, well, you know, if there's anything that you can do, it's you can learn from the past, yeah. you know, cause you have to look towards the past in order to pave the future. So, and if you look at people, anyone, Basically, anyone who signed with a record label, and especially with the recent tragedy of the Taylor Swift situation with Scooter Braun, you know, these dudes, these record labels. Quite uh, unquote, she got a quarter billion dollars for it. She's not, she had no problem taking the check, but I'll, 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 uh, listen, I'll listen, I'll listen, I'll listen. Yeah, yeah, you know, record labels are gougers, you know, yeah. they take people's careers and they have a big smile on their face and they try to trick society into thinking that you need a record label in order True. to quote unquote make it. I agree. And with that. you know, that is not the case, my friend. That is I not agree. the case. And we don't want a middleman to get in the way of our fans. We want them to come directly to us and we want to direct like go directly to them. And that's why our fans are so astonished when they see us because we're not going the average route we're creating this new path that's never been paved and it's been successful so far yeah we're fully i love it right now we run our own sound we do our own website design oh wow we, uh, record our own music we do our own live streaming tech we got some state-of-the-art technology when the pandemic hit in march and We've been live streaming with four cameras, 4K. Yes, we've spent over five years becoming sound engineers and studying sound technology and musicianship and how to run that sound. Because most bands, you know, take the Beatles. They were four dudes, which I love the Beatles, by the way. And they only had, you know, minimal sound equipment. They could just move around. But with us, we're each multi-instrumentalists. Yeah. We're yeah. constantly switching instruments. We each know how to play every instrument that's on this stage. <laughs> and we're learning more at the time. <laughs> And so they're astonished by this because this is something that's never been done before. Not only have we created a new sound because we do multiple genres of music that all ages and all types of people can relate. We've got something for everybody. And so that's why our fans are truly loving what we have to okay. say. Okay, so so I, I so just wanna unpack this a little bit more where, you don't need a record label as much because they used to control the distribution channels. You can go on CD Baby and get on everything, including, you know, title and everything and, and be streaming tomorrow, right? So I'm with, or whichever resource you use, right? So I'm with you on, you don't need a distribution channel. Number two, they would put out the money for you to market. But if you have a social media following, you already have a built-in ecosystem. So I love the fact that it's not necessarily disruption, but taking advantage of, that direct access to cut out the middleman. So I love that. Um, I want to do one last part of the business and then I'm going to ask you guys to maybe um, shoot, shoot out a bar, maybe if you're comfortable, but um, um, 
monetization? Are you doing merch? Are you doing shows? Are you pre-monetization? You're kind of working into that. How are you guys monetizing your audience? Yes. Yeah, as of now, we are monetizing all of our YouTube videos and we do get sales from uh, that as well as the super chats that come in on YouTube. And we also have a merch store on our website, yeah. sistersband.com. And we also are part of the TikTok Billion Dollar Creator Fund where we get paid. Vanessa for Pappas. We love you, Queen. <laughs> we get paid for making videos. Okay, so, yeah. so, so hold on. So you're, you're a m- musicians but you're going the route of the business model of content creators and having the platforms pay, which I love. No, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Because- we are we are female business entrepreneurs, you know, in the music industry and in other areas. And we're trying to prove that you can be a woman and youth, teens in the industry. You can do it. We own all of the copyright. And well, the I was going to say, you're always, you can throw your we own We do publishers. all 100% original songs. And copyright is a huge issue in the industry. I'm sure you know. And it's huge, but we own all of it. And, you know, CD Baby and Apple Music and iTunes, Spotify, you know, all these things, you know, I, I'm so, you know, we'll see in the future. We'll think about it maybe in the future, but they're a ripoff to musicians. Well, so no, and I, and and I, and I agree. And the best bang for your buck is exactly what you're doing. But one of the, one of my last questions I have for you guys on the business front is TikTok is great, but I know and heard of a lot of creators having a hard time crossing platforms. Now it seems organic to go from TikTok to YouTube because they're both video platforms, right? They're both visual, but I heard people having, you know, 5 million on TikTok, but like 70,000 on YouTube. Do you feel you guys have successfully or beginning to successfully transition over to YouTube? And if so, how did you do it? Yes, a lot of our uh, YouTube subscribers came from TikTok. So we're on the right track. And we're also on board with the brand new shorts videos that are coming out with YouTube that people, uh, it started out in India because, you know, they totally canceled out TikTok and that's banned in in India now. So they started in India and now they're slowly bringing it over to the U.S. And our short videos on YouTube are gaining a lot of views right now. And it's a lot of cool things as well as Instagram reels, which bring us huge numbers as well. And that's, Maybe even not from TikTok. It's just organic from from Instagram. that Instagram. Ha, how's your, well, the how's, thing about how's, these social media stars nowadays is that they have all their eggs in one basket. They're a one trick pony. That's all they are, yeah. and they're fakes as well. You know, whether they're manufactured by a record label or just had one video blow up on TikTok and boom, they're fakes. You know, with us, we have had our success come organically. We've been working hard for the past 12 years to do this, a set plan in motion to grow on all platforms yeah. because we are not here to be fake. We're here to be real and our fans respect that authenticity, you know? All right, so hold on. We're putting before, it on the line, you know, you so, got your guts up there. So before we conclude, I wanna do a little authenticity test. I know it's on the fly, but can you guys just give me maybe a hook, a chorus, just a little something so I could hear you guys' voice. Yeah. Sure. I'll give you a second. Take your time. Silver lining. Silver lining. Phoenix. Phoenix. Sure. Yes. Okay. So we some of our original songs we tie in with Harry Potter. So this one was kind of inspired by Fox the Phoenix from Harry Potter, and it has a very uplifting message. So this is called the Phoenix. The second part. Okay. Yeah. Sure. We are going yeah, to do the, the bridge too. Okay. One. Two, go. Just like the phoenix, you will arise. Out of the ashes, you're gonna fly. Feeling the healing, tears in your eyes. Nothing can stop you, now you're alive. No time for goodbyes. Just close your eyes, cause you're an angel in disguise. Wow. <laughs> I, you know what? I. I love the vibe. I love the energy. I love everything about you guys. By the way, I'd love to sing you our new title track song to our recent album that came out on Valentine's Day, Silver Lining. Can we sing the chorus, girls? Yeah, the chorus. Okay. Let's do it. One, two. Before you say, it's just the best I pay. Look a little closer. 
closer and you might see a silver lining on the horizon that doesn't have a fee and it's waiting for you and me wow i I, you know what like i love supporting young talent young female entrepreneurs young female creators um, I like the fact that you guys did not get sucked up into the centrifuge of the music industry and are working with um, your fans directly and building a new fan base organically, not just your current group. So Chris and Kelsey and Kayleen, how can we find you guys? I'm going to put links below, but how can we find you? Yeah, you know, we are on all the social medias, Instagram at KD Sisters Band, TikTok, of course, at KD Sisters Band. And YouTube, YouTube at Katie Sisters Band, and our website at Katie Sisters Band. I mean, www.katiesistersband.com. You can find our merch and all of our music for free streaming right there, and on Facebook, Katie Sisters Band as well, and YouTube Shorts and Instagram Reels. <laughs> Love it. We'll put the links below. And listen, as a as a father, you know, like next time your your, your parents get on here, whoever raised you gets on you, look at them and say thanks. You did a spectacular job raising three lovely young ladies. I'm an old head, so I look at things a little differently in that sense, but it's a pleasure to interview. I'm going to do my best to get you as many views as we can. Our, our podcast is going well, um, and it's people like you that is the reason why I do it. So thank you so much for being on the show, and uh, congratulations on all your success. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us.